Well, each film is, of course, a, a piece of art in time and a sculpture in time. And I think that time is basically what differentiates us from other beings, that we can even feel time. And that was part of my inspiration, because I think that when you can make a cinematographic film work where time, even uh, time as something that it can fall apart or that can break apart, I think that you can create a big space for the viewer. There was a lot of things that I felt identified with. One of my favorite quotes is when they talk about uh, hope as being the basis of time, and that is something that affects me, something that really touches me each time I hear that or think about that again, because it's indeed true if and when you're feeling absolutely hopeless, time seems to stand still. Of course, the whole time we're talking about time and presence in the film, and where Robert jumps over the counters the moment when the present falls apart, and that's complete presence at that moment where none of them, neither of the twins nor Eric, they have no control over what's happening at that moment, that entrance of the true presence Auch Gegenwart heute was anderes bedeutet als früher, nämlich and ich glaube, die Menschen handeln inzwischen Presence sehr doesn't oft mean anymore today what it used to mean in the past. I think that people are, while people are carrying out actions, they're thinking about the images as well that they're creating while they're acting. So people behave in a cinema cinematographic way because they've seen so many films and they're trying to deal with the information that they're gathering and they manipulate that via the uh, collective consciousness of cinema. What's so exciting about philosophy is not the answering of the questions but maintaining the questions alive. And Robert says that at one point in the film. He says the, the questions are always the same. It's only the answers that change. So that question you're asking cannot be answered. But for centuries, there's been an answer that's been given, and that answer is always different. I'm quite convinced that violence in human beings is, is sleeping on, underneath us, and yet it's something quite foreign as well. It's something that's inside of us, and yet we don't understand. We don't understand why it happens. And then all of a sudden, it happens. From We know that this happens in different moments in our life. And that's quite consciously set up in that way, that this is supposed to be a disturbing element. I don't like films where everything is explained psychologically why someone put out a gun and shot someone, because that's not the way things happen. Violence is actually a, it's a tear, it's a rip, and it's something that we have to put up with in our lives, and we also have to put up with it in cinema. When you try to move that away and say this is all because they had a bad childhood or whatever, then I think that that's trying to make something seem innocent that actually is not innocent. Innocent, and I didn't want to do that. What you perhaps don't notice is that the landscape around the gas station was also controlled in a way. This was a year-long process, in fact, where we first began to have to choose the actual spot where we would be able to have the free space, the different elements wouldn't mm, interfere with us, such as too much traffic or things that would change the environment too much. And then we also had to work on keeping under control everything around the gas station, for example, the type of cereal or grains that were built if they were we wanted to, if they weren't actually, if they were growing and were going to fall over, then we had to give a certain support to make sure that they wouldn't fall over. A question would be why would we choose a gas station when we could just uh, do something in a studio, for example, with the camera work? And before the gas station, there was already the shot list of what things would look like and where we were supposed to bring the camera into position. And then there were certain uh, there were certain holes, in a way, like in a cheese. There were certain places where we had to, for example, bring the camera back so that we could see through the roof in a certain way, etc. So we had to work around that. You need a certain amount of time in to create a space for experience, for telling a story. Classical way of telling a story is you tell a story, and at the end, it's a dramatic form that is finished at the end, you can say, this is the story that I've just heard, and I'm going home knowing what the story is, but that story is not me. But I'm trying to do films in a different way, where actually something happens together with the spectator. And this can be uh, an effort for the spectator, but it 
takes more time as well, because this is something that's happening inside of you, and that requires time. So the film cannot be too short, because if it were, you would be at a completely different place where we didn't actually want to be. And perhaps the co-producers could say how that was for them to wait for years for this film to be finished. And to know that this is not going to be the big hit of the summer as well, is it? <laughs> we are luckily in a privileged position in that we do not have to wait for or we cannot try and produce only uh, box office successful films that we can worry about content as well and that we're the without that money pressure we're the ones who can actually initiate and uh, foster and show these types of films we're also getting to know each other via such films and these are films if we want to renovate the German film then it's such initiatives like this film that will do that